y'all. This is Marley K. I hope y'all are well. Um, this is a story about religious freedom. It is in the Telegraph. It came out um, yesterday on March the 11th. And the story says, no religion has a, has a right not to be offended, says security minister. Now, I don't know exactly what this means. He says, no religion has a right to be exempt from criticism. The secretary, I'm sorry, the security minister has said ahead of a crackdown on extremism. So to me, um, you know, although they're going to craft it around the Islam issue when um, somebody killed somebody about drawing a cartoon of the prophet Muhammad, this, I think, is just going to be a general faith. Um, law that's going to come into play and they're getting ready to crack down on all these different faiths. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I also think that they're doing this because um, of the war that's getting ready to start up because um, of you know what's going on in the Middle East, but not only that, the original shenanigans that we have today here, um, Protestant, Protestantism and uh, white nationalism, uh, white Christianity came from those places. So, you know, when you talk about um, crafting religious law that's going to impact us, I always pay attention to what goes on over there because it's going to come here. Now, we don't have to deal with the Islamic um component as much because we have you know that you know they have other mechanisms to control and I said we not me them they have controls to um you know contain whatever they don't want whatever messages they don't want out and whatever religions they don't want um cultivated so to me this is all about uh, Christianity and trying to stomp it out so that when they have this new world government, they don't have to worry about religion. So these are um, new laws that are going to be coming out that's basically going to fix it where there's no no religion. You won't have a national religion. You won't have a national culture. It's going to erase the culture because morals and values, religion, uh, play a role in pretty much every culture, rituals, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the little gods, the big gods, whatever. And so we are going to um, start seeing a lot of these white nations come up with these laws because they're the ones that got to change. They're the ones that got to get rid of their culture because they're not going to be here anymore. And once you get rid of their culture, you can force everybody else to do whatever else you want them to do because the blacks and browns don't have no protection. We don't have no leg to stand on. We've been invaded. They have us where they want us. We are brainwashed. It'll just be really easy to brainwash us again, erase history, brainwash us again, act like it never happened. So the protesters, the Protestants, the, the Protestants are about to um, basically get a wake up call. And to me, this is laying the foundation for the AI God, the AGI, the artificial general intelligence, the God like um, um, artificial intelligence that is going to ask to be worshipped. So they got to get rid of all this other stuff and confuse everybody and say nobody has a right to be exempt from criticism. So, you know, they're doing the pitting religions against each other, Christianity and Islam, or Protestantism and Christianity. It's always going to be something. So we might as well get used to seeing this, but we have to pay attention to it because they already have bills set up everywhere to just push in place whenever they get ready. They've already been proposed. They're sitting there. They're going to be dusted off, stuck in some bill. Next thing you know, it's going to become law. 
and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. So this is why I'm talking about it. So we can just at least have it on record that we talk, we discussed it and we see what the plot is. So it says Tom Tudgen, Tudgened Hot Hat Hot said no faith had a right to be challenged amid concerns that some extremists have used intimidation and threats of violence against those perceived to have insulted Islam. It follows the case of a teacher in Bately, West York, who received death threats after showing pupils a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad during a religious education lesson almost two years ago and has remained in hiding ever since as he fears for his life. Well, this is how I feel. If the, if the culture said, don't do this because we feel disrespected, and children of the corn is like, I'm going to do it because I'm white and I say so. Then when you do it, then you get the smoke. You're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid for my life now. Well, leave people alone. People already told you don't do that. Why? You, you could have respected the religion and not done the offensive thing and talked about it in a totally different way. What would have been better is had you got somebody from the religion to come and talk about it if you wanted to do a lesson. Um, but, uh, you know, if it's, it was if it was a religious education lesson, it's not your religion, what better way uh, for you to introduce some other God that you don't know about is than to let other people talk about their God to you because it's not your God. You don't know nothing about it. And the only reason you did it the way that you did it is because you want to be offensive and because you can do that. But see, them people, not like all the other people, them people would get at your ass. And so now then he done got his little ass got at. Uh, and he got a whole religion now, like get him. And he's concerned. So... Now they are trying to, uh, I guess, counter this, but all it's going to do is just create another division. So like I said before, this is the Hegelian uh, dialectic. It's just, you got to um, cause a problem so you can cause a solution. And children of the corn just be making all kinds of problems for everybody. So it says, Mr. Tug and Hat declined to comment on individual cases, but he said there's absolutely no right for any religion to be offended. If we accepted that, then we'd still be Catholic. Every religion has the right to be challenged, and there is no religion that has the right to be immune from that for any reason. Speaking on GB News, he added, anybody can challenge any article of any faith. It is absolutely fundamental, and there is no right to be immune from that. You know very well because it's the fundamental tenet of your job as a journalist to have freedom of speech. Well, we know we don't have no freedom of speech. So it says a new definition of extremism is to be announced. So his comments came ahead of an announcement this week of a new official definition of extremism that will enable the government and bodies such as universities and councils to ban funding for or engagement with Islamist and far right groups. So the fact that they specifically target Islamic and whatever they consider far right groups mean they ain't white, or you know, you, you always got to wait for the far right because it could be anything, anybody. Um, but anyway, they're setting up the stage for um, conflicts with the Muslim nations and Muslim people that are likely immigrating there because the Middle East is getting ready, uh, not getting ready, the Middle East is um, in conflict. Um, so they're probably gonna have a whole lot of people, uh, refugees and people seeking asylum coming to Europe. And so they want to lay the groundwork for them making it you know, uncomfortable. Um, anyway, it's it's uh, all propaganda. At the end of the day, these people just pit people against people, and they never they do it. They're so um, slick with it that you 
don't realize the whole reason everybody is mad at everybody, everybody's doing whatever. The reason that we got all these religions are because of those people. So, and not them specifically, but their ancestors, those things, the, the things that they've done hail from those nations that seek to control all these things and they just keep changing the rule, changing the rules. So, um, you know, you got to study history and, and understand what times we're living in. This is classic. So it says the definition to be unveiled by Michael Gove the community secretary will replace the existing prevent counter terror programs definition, giving more specificity on the ideologies, behavior, and groups of concern. It will enable the government and public bodies to bar groups from venues or campuses and block funding if they are judged to be promoting extremist ideology that undermines or overturns British values, white values, Anglo-Saxon values, children of the corn values. Protest condemning acts of apparent blasphemy have become more frequent and radicalized. So now they're getting ready to just label everybody. You can't say nothing. There's basically a freedom of speech. Um, law or, you know, they're just redefining who they're targeting. But at the end of the day, it's like it's going to drag net everybody because it, it's going to be to the point where everybody's going to be complaining about stuff after a while. So it says, according to the Independent Research Commission by the government's uh, Independent Research Commission by the government's counter extremism chief. So the government paid for some research and we are supposed to believe what it says the report exposes links between activists at the front at the forefront of recent protests in the uk and an extremist islamist political party in pakistan whose members have regularly called for blasphemers to be beheaded so i don't know nothing about none of this but i'm just telling you about the law that's coming and what's happening there is coming here. So this is why I'm focusing on it. Because those of us who are trying to keep Torah, trying to keep Sabbath, trying to live morally, um, who have, you know, instructions on how to live, if we try to live counter anything else, you're going to be a problem. You're going to be collected. You could, stuff going to happen to you. So said so Robin Simcox, the government's counter-terror extremism, Czar commissioned the search after after sorry commissioned the research after three blasphemy flashpoints in the UK. Um, these included the 2021 protest against the teacher Batley against the Batley teacher. I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. I read like I'm dyslexic. Birmingham protest over the screening of the film, The Lady in Heaven, which depicted Muhammad's daughter and last year's controversy in Wakefield after a copy of the Quran was slightly damaged at a high school. Seems to me like there's just a lot of provocation going on. But see, when you provoke and then you get the smoke, you need to put you some laws in place to protect your instigators. That's what I see, but Okay. Government has hasn't had the spine to take them on. Um, so it says it's come it comes as the government faced criticism from Fiaz Mughal, a campaigner against extremism who was lined up to become Mr. Gove's anti Muslim hatred czar until withdrawing his application at the weekend. And amid a torrent of abuse and threats on social media from Islamists and the far right. Along with this with the senior MPs, he is urging Mr. Gove to publish a list of the extremist groups that would be caught by the new definition. So it's kind of like the Southern Poverty Law Center. So if y'all don't know about the, the Southern Poverty Law Center, it was started by these little hat people you can't talk about. 
and they allegedly um if you, it's such a screwed up history but these are the people who created the Southern Poverty Law Center. And they basically made millions of dollars suing all these organizations that were responsible for hate crimes against African-American people. So the people who created it got filthy rich. They ain't hardly do nothing for the people itself collectively. So the Southern Poverty Law Center has a bunch of money. They hire all these attorneys. They find these cases. They do all this research. They create these lists. And then they work with the government and the gov- they tell the government, these people are a threat. And if you look at what they've done over time, they've done all these different groups, especially black groups, Muslim groups, you know, um, it's just so much. And But they never turn, turn to themselves to discuss how they terrorize everyone and... So when the rabbit gets the gun, folks don't like it. So they have to change the rules. And now people are waking up to the fact that, hey, wait a minute. These people are always getting to decide what's hate speech. How do they get to be in control of that? And so now people are starting to not listen to them. And so now that they're losing control of the messaging and losing control over the evil communications or the power that they have because people can see thanks to um, media and, you know, people doing videos and uploading them themselves. Everybody can be a journalist. And so now people are like, wait a minute. Now they said this, but this is what's happening. So now people are like, what's, what's really going on? And in the Caucasians, the Anglo-Saxons are now doing what they do best. They are shape-shifting into something new, but they're really going back to how they were back during um, the days of uh, pre-Protestantism, where they only want one religion, and that's going to be Catholicism. So you got to destroy Christianity, you got to destroy Islam, and you got to destroy Judaism. And so all these are getting ready to be destroyed. The only thing that's going to be left... Um, sanitized and free is going to be um, Catholicism. And that's because it is going to be a part of the beast system. It's the beast that had the um, wound healed. And you're looking at these Gentile nations uh, craft all these laws and come up with all this religious um, language and where like church and state are meeting. These are examples of where church and state are meeting, public and private meeting. God and, and um, or not God, but religion and the kings or, um, you know, you see in this, this system where everybody's kind of like always on the same page in the Gentile nations. And They're talking about it here, too, with the Christian nationalism. So it sounds different in different nations, but it's the same movement, same um, expected results. Uh, There will be chaos. There's always going to be two groups against each other. It's always going to be chaos. They always have a solution. So just remember that. So it says, Mr. Mugo told the Telegraph, these groups have gone under the radar because the government has never had the spine to take them on. We need to call them out to let the public see them and know them for what they are. They are a threat to our country, yet police and other organizations have been engaging with some of these Islamist groups to provide training. He also alleged some officials in Whitehall were sympathetic to the Islamists which he said was part of the problem. So white people cannot be sympathetic to no other group of people. White people got to stay on cold. And if they get their asses off of cold, we're going to get them back in cold with law. Because what? Guess what? That's what they love. They love words and laws and and punishment um, for those who don't obey the words and the laws. So the Gentiles who are... um, you know, trying to come out of white supremacy, always get real back in because there's a punishment for getting off code. And so this is basically what they're saying. He added, 
they have civil servants who have sympathies to these groups. So you can't even be a human when you at work. You just got just got to be terrible to people. So, um, you know, I want y'all to pay attention to these these uh new definitions of extremism. We had a rede- redefining during the Trump administration, and a lot of people saw that. For the first time, white folks was labeled extremists. It was for a season. Now, because these wars, things getting ready to start happening, they're going to go back to their old tried and true ways. They're going to make everybody else the extremists. And white folks are going to need protection. But they are going to be um, the ones provoking everybody. And... Then saying, why you hit me when folks defend themselves? Or folks just get tired of being um, poked at. And so you keep poking the bear, the bear going to slap you back. And that's what's happening. So if it's going to happen on a grand scale, because it's going to happen globally. Anywho, religious freedom is going away. And... Before it goes away, we all going to be fighting each other about what we believe. That's the gist of this story. So get ready, y'all. Get ready, get ready. If you think you ain't going to make no choice, if you think you're going to just be able to sit on the sidelines and watch, everybody going to have to make a choice about something or several things before it's all over with. And I want y'all to understand that you cannot sit on the sidelines. It's not a sideline game. It's not a spectator sport. It's about you and the rest of us. So if you sit on the sidelines, people are ready to make decisions for you and they're going to be decisions that you did not choose. So um, don't have fear, have faith. You're going to have to gird your loins and stand your ground. You're going to have to stand on y'all's business and you're going to have to stand up to the children of the corn. And that's something that we have been taught and conditioned not to do. And so a lot of our people are just like, we're ready to go along to get along so we can get back to normal. Ain't no no, ain't no ain't normal. We ain't going back to nothing. It's just going to get worse from here. So the best thing I can tell you to do is learn how to um, learn how to fight because that's what what you're doing and it's spiritual not physical so just make sure you can um spend a lot of time in your word increasing your faith you got to believe that the most high is going to work all this stuff out but it did not say we were not going to be impacted i know folks think they're going to fly up out of here some some going to happen and you ain't going to have to go through nothing and i'm not talking about the israelites <laughs> We'll talk about everybody else, the Gentiles who ain't cleaving in the, unto us. Y'all gonna go through something. We all gonna go through something. But people who don't believe are really gonna go through something. You got to be, you got to understand what what we're getting ready to experience, and it's not like anything that has ever happened um, in the history of the world because the world is more evil than it ever has been. It's been more populated than it ever has been and people are just more hateful and it's all because of one group of people you can go you keep going back and looking at history and if you study who the people are one group of people always corrupted another group of people one group of people always refuse to do what we're supposed to do and they make all kinds of excuses to come up with all kinds of schemes and then before you know it everybody else is following them then when you figure out hey the emperor don't have no clothes but the emperor is crazy you try to turn around it's not so so i just um don't know how we're gonna make it out of this without the most high, the creator. And if you're not praying to him, trying to make things right, 
before all this stuff happens. I don't know what to say because when it starts happening, you may still have a little piece of window to to try to make things right. But it's going to be real difficult for all of us um, because these people control so much of the world now. Um, So you just see your quality of life going down the tubes. You see you're not going to have the right to do much of anything. And that's unfortunate. So let us remember when times were good because they're getting ready to not be good going forward. All right, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified each and every time I upload new content. Please make sure you are still subscribed to the channel because YouTube has been unsubscribing some of my um, followers. Uh, Follow me on Rumble, Odyssey, Instagram, and on Facebook in the event that this channel is taken down for uh, content purposes. You can contact me on the other platforms and you can watch my um, continued streams of content on Rumble. All the other stuff should be still backed up here, but in the event that they take the whole channel down, um, the content is backed up on Rumble and on Odyssey. If you'd like to support the channel financially, I have a link for I'm sorry for Venmo and Coffee at the very bottom of the description. The link to this store will be in the in the not in the description because you know of the algorithms. So I'll put it in the comment section. And um, lastly, continue to pray, continue to prep, continue to seek the Most High. Pray for your sins daily, sense of commission and sense of omission. Obey those law, statutes, and commandments. Learn the law, statutes, and commandments. Don't just think about the Ten Commandments. Get back into Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers. Um, it's so much stuff that we need to learn that we don't know, that we should not be doing, especially as brothers and sisters, as Israelites. You can't do what the world does. That's why we are called to come out of her. The Lord took us out of, not the Lord, Yah took us out of Egypt so we could be apart from the heathen. And we keep finding ourselves with the heathens because we can't let them go. We love their chaos. We love their other gods. We love their food, even though Y'all already told us everything that they have is not good for us. Um, We just love it. So we're going to continue to have issues as long as we cleave unto them. So we need to come out of their systems, get back to the ways that we are supposed to live, uh, obey our king, and make sure that we are living holy and set apart because... You're not going to be able to survive in this in this world with these folks running stuff. They just doggone schizophrenic out here in these streets. It's just going to get worse. And they're trying to make us poor. And they don't want us to work. And they don't want us to have nothing. Oh, dear father. Anyway, this is Marta K. Love y'all and I'm out.